So I heard about SPJMR several times actually. In 2004, my wife's cousin got admitted to SPJMR's uh, uh, two-year program. As it turned out later, it was the FMB program, but at that point, I didn't quite know the distinction. Uh, her other cousin started at SPJMR in 2006. So I guess my family association with SPJMR goes all the way back to 2004. Uh, a friend association actually goes to 2015. Um, I went to IIT Bombay and Ranjan Banerjee, the former dean of SPJMR, is a LinkedIn friend of mine and a friend of mine. And when he joined as the dean of SPJMR, LinkedIn kindly informed me that somebody I knew had become the dean of SPJMR. So, and that's when it came back into my consciousness. Now, the final time when I understood what SPJMR was really about was through an employee of mine. So in my last company, one of my best managers, uh, who I will not embarrass here other than just referring to him by his first name of Vikram, um, was somebody that was quite different from the rest of the MBAs that worked for me. So this was about three or four years ago. And as I got to know him, I found a few things about him that I later learned were characteristic of the average SPJMR person. He was extremely grounded. His integrity was impeccable. He always put others ahead of himself. And I could always count on him to deliver what it is that he said he would deliver. And he was fundamentally a good guy. And as we were talking, I was trying to get a sense of who he was and where he had gone to school. And he mentioned SPJMR. Uh, so that came back again, uh, back to my memory. And then he basically talked about two things that I thought were extremely uh, different for somebody from an MBA school to be talking about. He talked about this program where he had gone to a village for four weeks. It might have been six weeks at that time and worked there and he talked about the impression that had left behind on him. He talked about a slum kid that he had mentored through 12 months. And I sort of said, this is pretty unusual. I have never had an MBA student sit and talk to me, first thing, about these as being uh, their formative experiences. So that was another time when sort of SPJMR came to the front of my mind. And the final time was when Ranjan reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to come in as a guest lecturer uh, and do a class at SPJMR in the information management uh, group. And so with Professor Anil Vaidya, I actually taught a class in 2019 uh, while I was on work uh, visiting my company in Bangalore. So many, many touch points with SPJMR going all the way back to 2004. So I was looking to transition to academia probably when I turned about 40 or so. You know, you tend to realize who you are as a person or people, you know, many times your wife helpfully tells you who you are as a person. And one of the realizations I had was that I like explaining things. Um, so while I like developing products, I like taking products to market, I actually like grappling with complex ideas and, and explaining things to folks and to myself. And so I was looking to see what kind of a thing could I do where I deal with something new on a regular basis, where it's not just about me understanding it for myself, it's about me trying to explain complex ideas to others and hopefully learning something new along the way myself. And so academia seemed like a natural extension or a natural place to practice that kind of an interest. And so I began to figure out um, what I needed to do in order to transition to academia, including uh, going and finding a PhD program that worked for me and then going out and doing my doctorate at that time. But after completing my PhD, I wasn't paying too much thought to exactly what kind of academic institution I would join. But I knew I wanted something that really hit upon two things. At a personal level, I wanted an opportunity where I could lead an organization, but I could also teach and do research. And that combination is not a common combination that you would find in most schools. In most schools, you're either an administrator or you're a researcher or you're a teacher, but very rarely do you find an opportunity where you can do all three. And so when the SPJMR opportunity uh, appeared, it certainly seemed unique in that it allowed me to practice all three interests uh, and, and build on my skills as an administrator and as a leader while indulging in my interests as a teacher and as a researcher. Now, the other thing, again, that stood out about SPJMR, and I will, again, go back to Vikram and the fact that he piqued in me an interest that this was a different kind of business school. And I have always been a proponent that capitalism is a great system, but it needs a conscience. It needs practitioners that can make the system work not just for themselves, but for society. You could call it capitalism 2.0, you could call it, you know, socially conscious capitalism. 
And the question is how best can one influence this? How best can one influence society so that the new capitalism and the new information age based capitalism works for all? And I was looking at one other opportunity which was very different. I was looking at an opportunity within Silicon Valley because that's the place that I know well and that I'm comfortable with. Uh, of working on a new company that would deal with the problem of disinformation on the internet. And that was definitely an idea that had a lot of merit. It would have touched a lot of people. And for, in terms of impact, it would have had a lot of impact. So that was what I was comparing SPJMR against. Um, you know, do I want to go and basically figure out a way of handling disinformation on the web? Or do I basically have an opportunity, as SPJMR's mission says, to influence practice and to promote value-based growth? And I thought I would have a good opportunity to touch many more lives in a more meaningful fashion and perhaps create a greater impact through my students and through the work that my students would do with industry and with society than by myself trying to figure out how to handle the disinformation problem. So, long story, but that's basically how I came to be at SVJMR. So, you know, very few business schools are able to articulate who they are and what they do, I think, as clearly as SPJMR can. And so I must sort of say that, you know, there are oldies and goodies, and this one is one of them. I think this mission statement has stood the test of time. It was crafted before these concepts became fashionable. And that is the reason why I find this mission statement to be authentic and genuine. And the mission statement is very simple. The mission statement is really about influencing practice and promoting value-based growth. Now let's take a look at what each of them means or what, what each one means to me. Influencing practice is basically what we do. And what does SPJMR do to influence practice? They work with students by offering them the right kinds of pedagogical experiences through the right kinds of teaching. And they create thought leadership. And they work with organizations in terms of how organizations implement key practices. And all of this is done with the purpose of creating or driving value-based growth. So let's take a look at what value-based growth means and to whom. To a student, when SPJMR talks about promoting value-based growth within a student, what we're basically saying is we would love our students to come out of SPJMR with a genuine sense of who they are, with a sense of compassion for not just themselves, but the world around them, a sense of appreciation for the actions they take and a sense of discrimination for how those actions positively or negatively impact society. That kind of a conscious citizen is what SPJMR tries to do. And in that sense, the growth that we're talking about is the growth of the individual. We're talking about a person being a better person coming out of SPJMR than they were coming in. We're talking about the values that they imbibe at SPJMR, like my friend Vikram did, helping them throughout their lives as they continue to grow. You're not going to stop growing once you leave whichever educational institution you went to. And so the question is, what did the educational institution do to help you continue to learn, to help you continue to grow? And I think that's what value-based growth means from a student perspective. Now, value-based growth also can be interpreted with a few other lenses. What does value-based growth mean if you're a company? What does value-based growth mean if you're a society? And what is it that SPJMR does to promote value-based growth at the company level and value-based growth at the society level. Now, at the company level, when we look at value-based growth, what we think of is growth that is inclusive and growth that is sustainable. So we're talking really about growth again that benefits not just the individual corporation, but the corporation's various stakeholders. And in management theory, you might refer to it as stakeholder theory. The reason I like the concept of value-based growth is because it kind of predates some of these more buzzwordy jargon phrases that have then you know, come into the management lexicon. So inclusive growth is really about making sure you're not the sole beneficiary. Of course, the purpose of capitalism is to make a profit. Of course, the purpose is to win. But I do believe you can win without others having to necessarily lose, right? There is something called the win-win. And I would sort of say inclusive growth is really looking for win-win opportunities wherever possible. The second kind of growth is sustainable growth. You know, you see too many stories of chief executives and CFOs uh, borrowing or stealing from tomorrow's earnings to goose up today's earnings. That would be an example of, you know, a simple type kind of growth that's really not sustainable, right? Because the next year will come and that growth just won't be there, but maybe the CEO and the CFO have moved on with, you know, rich remuneration onto greener pastures. Now, that is at a very sort of a material level, if you will. 
But sustainable growth is also about sustainability of the company and the economy. And in this case, sustainability is about making sure that you're not creating negative externalities, you're not destroying the environment in the process, you're not through predatory pricing, destroying the entire you know, business ecosystem, and that the system that you as a company work in remains sustainable and you take the actions to make sure that your success doesn't depend on sort of the destruction of the environment around you that, that supports you. Now, interestingly, um, these two concepts of inclusiv inclusivity and sustainability pretty much permeate the 17 uh, strategic development goals that the United Nations has been talking about since 2015. But again, I would point to the genuineness of SPJMR's mission statement as something that was crafted in the 1980s and that has basically endured uh, since. And similarly, at a society level, I don't know about you, but the society I want to live in is one where everybody is equal, where everybody has the opportunity to succeed, where everybody is given the tools to succeed, one that is inclusive. And certainly, I want this world to be there for my children and my children's children, and I want it to be a sustainable world as opposed to, be, as opposed to something that I took advantage of at a personal level and discarded, you know, like a used sock. So let, let me think again a little bit about what it is that makes SPJMR students different. Sure, all business schools, all good business schools, will impart to their students the fundamental knowledge on accounting and finance and marketing and organizational behavior and so forth. You know, those are essential building blocks. Any business school worth its name will do a decent enough job of imparting that kind of knowledge. But there are a couple of other things that I think make the pedagogy different. One of them is about the ability to do synthesis. Business schools are very, very good at teaching analysis. They allow you to sort of break a problem down into the piece spots and try and really go deep into piece spots, spreadsheet jockeys, if you will. The harder part is to figure out what these dots mean, to connect the dots together and to put it all together into sort of a solution that makes sense. So that would be what synthesis is, right? Putting together the pieces to craft a whole solution. And the pedagogy of SPJMR basically tries to create that kind of ability to synthesize across points, an example being its emphasis on design thinking. By not turning design thinking into an elective that people take or not, but instead turning it into a core course, from a pedagogical perspective, what SPJMR has done is force the students at the end of their very first year to try and put together all the piece parts that they have learned in the context of a problem that they're going to solve in a user empathetic manner. And that is just one of several kinds of experiences that SPJMR students go through or will go through in order to develop their synthesis chops. The second thing that I think that makes SPJMR unique is what I picked up from my friend Vikram, which is there are a set of experiences that students carry for life. Now, I look back at my undergraduate days and with all due respect to my professors for four years who I love very much, I don't really remember a whole lot about any individual class that I took at IIT. Uh, I'm sure there were fantastic classes, but if you ask me anything about any of the classes, the ones I do remember are the ones that had to do with synthesis, strangely, around Indian philosophy. But on the other hand, the kinds of things I do remember were all the things I did outside the classroom. The debates that I participated in, the drama competitions that I took part in, and so on. Now, mind you, they were all fairly self-centric, selfish, 18-year-old activities. And that is where my hat's off to the SPJMR kids because the experiences that they're taking away that they're talking about 15 years later in their professional career as Vikram was, was the four or six weeks they spent during the monsoons in some village trying to basically make a drainage system work. Or the nine months they spent taking a child that had no interest in maybe academic work and somehow finding a way to get that kid interested in doing things and, and explaining to the kid that that was their way out of the slum that they lived in. These kinds of experiences, uh, and I've just mentioned two, but there are other experiences that SPJMR provides. An ability to get to know oneself. You know, there's a leadership learning lab process that the students go through where the transition from I to us uh, or me to we begins to happen. These are experiences that students take away. 10 years from now, that's what they're gonna be talking about. It's less likely they're gonna be talking about the segmentation techniques that they learned in their marketing class. So to me, the pedagogy that emphasizes synthesis and that ex ex emphasizes experiential learning, of which I've given some examples, is really what makes SPJMR unique and distinct.
Management schools have several responsibilities. I think a primary responsibility is to create students that can create value-based growth or drive value-based growth as we discussed. And a lot of that comes through teaching, right? You get to interact with the student directly. But if you're trying to impact and influence the practice of thousands and tens of thousands and millions of people, you have to have another way besides teaching to disseminate valuable information. This information or this thought leadership is really what I want to talk about a little bit. I, in my opinion, too many academics spend a lot of time building detailed models and detailed studies about very narrow aspects of market behavior and human behavior, which are fascinating, but might be building blocks as opposed to fully synthesized solutions. They might be building blocks for further research. So there's a lot of rigor and an emphasis on rigor in management education and management research these days, which is, is, rel which is fine because you do want to make sure that research building blocks are solid. But much more important than rigor in my mind is relevance. Um, so now I would not talk about non-rigorous research as being relevant. So what I'm talking about is, is rigorous research, but that is relevant to practice. So to me, thought leadership from a business school should really be about creating knowledge that has been vetted thoroughly, hence the emphasis on rigor, but that is also somehow practical and that is somehow applicable and that is somehow relevant to people's practice and to the economy and to outcomes. So I would like to see SPJMR continue down its tradition and enhance, in fact, its output in terms of this type of relevant research. So to me, that's what thought leadership means. So the question is, what did the COVID world teach us, right? It taught us a few things about who we are as a society. Um, it taught us the fact that we're all connected to each other. It taught us that there really is not that much distinction between rich people and poor people. So to me, COVID was a great leveler and a stark reminder of the fact that we have one world that we all share. So to me, that is, is, is one key takeaway. A second key takeaway was that human beings are amazingly resilient. It was unbelievable to see the economy shift into virtual online mode. It was unbelievable to see businesses that had probably resisted digital transformation for 10 years, 20 years, suddenly go digital because they had to. So what it showed to me there was that the human spirit and ingenuity is an amazing thing that when required, human beings can basically innovate rapidly. So the question is in this world where we realize that everybody is connected and where we realize that rapid change is possible, what does that really mean for management education? And I think I'll come back to some of the values that SPJMR uh, promotes in its pedagogy. I think the concept of synthesis is highly important. Now, let me explain that a little bit. What COVID showed us was that we are all part of a large system and that small changes in assumptions can result in various changes in outcomes and things that happen in one part of the world can impact another part of the world. Now, people who study complex systems and complexity theory and chaos theory will tell you that that fact was always known. But I think it became extremely stark as to how a system connected of interrelated parts basically morphs over time, how feedback loops change the nature of systems over time. So having this kind of capability, the ability to do an analysis and a synthesis of complex adaptive systems, I think is a key part that management schools will need to incorporate into their curriculum going forward. I think a second key part will basically be around the notion of experiences. If you look at trying to deal with this kind of a world which was uh, interconnected and changing rapidly, things you have learned through your textbooks are only going to be helpful to a certain point. You are going to have to try new solutions, you're going to have to adapt, you're going to have to interact with people you've never interacted with before. And therefore, all the learnings you have of the non-classroom kind, the ability to interact with anybody, to go into unknown situations, to, to take a chance, to fail, to recover, these are things that are built much more through life experiences than they are in the classroom. And I think therefore, the management schools of the future will actually begin to uh, emphasize and offer a broad range of these non-classroom experiences, because I think without that, managers of tomorrow will not be able to uh, deal with and respond to the threats and changes of tomorrow.
I am Varun and I am SPJMR. <laughs>